Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. So, you want to get started in the hobby of astronomy. Well, first off, congratulations. You couldn't have chose a better hobby to, uh, to get involved in. Uh, well, it certainly kept me entertained for the uh, past 30 years, put it that way. And every clear night I go out there, I find new levels of entertainment. Now, the most common question asked when uh, anybody starts astronomy is, do I need a telescope or what telescope do I need to buy? And the latter is what you should be asking really is, do you actually need a telescope to start uh, the hobby of astronomy? And the answer is a big fat no. You don't. You really don't. In fact, I'd encourage you not to buy a telescope for at least nine months or something like that of actually being into the hobby. I know you're not going to like, it's just irresistible. There's that many uh, nice telescopes out there. At the now, the best thing to do before thinking about buying any optical aid is to learn your way around the night sky. Now, this may sound like it's, well, well that's, a, that's a real hard task. You know, how am I supposed to learn my way around all that? But once you actually get started, you'll find just how, how easy it becomes. And I mean, I haven't got no super memory. In fact, I've got quite a poor memory. Um, but... You, I, I, if there isn't a star up there really that somebody could point to and I wouldn't be able to tell them what constellation it's in. Not because I'm some professor of astronomy or anything like that. It's just that that's the first thing I studied when I got into astronomy. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the thing is with learning the constellations or learning your way around the night sky, you'll be using it throughout the time you or into this hobby, basically. I mean, I, you, you constantly use the constellations. They're going to point you on to bigger and better things. Now, what I mean by um, they'll lead you on to bigger and better things is you use constellations to point to uh, a lot more interesting targets that are up there. Some of the deep sky objects, some of the galaxies and the star clusters. So all the time you'll be using the constellations, constellations, constellations. So, um, you know, it's a real good thing to start off learning them from really early in the, in the hobby. Now, in total, there are 88 constellations. And I don't mean go out there and learn 88 constellations in a week. Um, a, that's just going to totally overwhelm you. And B, you'll not be able to do it because it'll actually take you 12 months to learn all the constellations because it takes 12 months for them all to uh, complete the cycle around the axis. Okay, or should I say around the pole star. Now, you don't have to learn all 88 no matter what because we can't see all 88 constellations and that all depends on whether you live on the north or southern hemisphere. Now, when it comes to learning the night sky or the constellations, um, I can't stress more than buying a good book. And I do say book rather than app, okay? The thing is with books, uh, and it's not because I'm old fashioned or anything like that. Um, you just absorb information better. You can go through a book at your own time. You'll learn a lot more from a good star chart than you would watching a hundred videos, okay? Now, the books to go for, um, I mean, I could I could recommend there's there's hundreds out there that are that are that they're worth buying, okay. But without sounding patronising, and I don't mean to sound this patronising at all, okay. No matter how old you are, whether you're 16 or 60, go for if you're a total novice, okay, and you you don't know your Leo from your Gemini, okay. Get books that are aimed at kids, okay. Now. The thing is with those books, they are still accurate, all right? And they're going to point you in the right di direction. But they're very basic, they're colourful, they're easily laid out, and they cut out all the jargon. Unlike a complicated star atlas where there's a lot of things on there that are too much at the time. 
uh, and they kind of, you know, they're going to confuse you. There's going to be too much to take in. Where these kids' books, like astronomy's uh, for for beginners, or you know, that are aimed round about the 10 to 12 um, age group, are brilliant for learning when you're first starting out. So don't be put off by them. You know, don't think, well, this is a bit babyish like. You, they really will help you. And it's a massive step into um, being, you'll quickly go from being a beginner to a seasoned astronomer just by learning your constellations. Now, I briefly uh, talked about uh, some optical aid telescopes and such like at the start of the video. And um, I don't want you to over, if you do insist on getting some kind of telescope, okay, don't overlook or underestimate binoculars for astronomy, okay? A good pair of binoculars is a hundred times better than a cheap department store uh, telescope, okay? Um, in the community, they're called trash scopes, basically, or toy scopes, okay? Um, you may have seen them. They have an aperture of around about 50 millimeters, something like that. Trust me, you may as well just get a drinking straw and try looking through that because that's the sort of views you're going to be getting. On the other hand, a good pair of binoculars, now they don't even have to be full-size binoculars like this. I mean, these are cheap budget binoculars and they're absolutely fantastic. In fact, there isn't a clear night where these don't come out with me. I still use them now, even though I've got a telescope, I still do uh, love looking at the stars through a pair of binoculars. And like I say, you don't need full-size binoculars binoculars like this, just small bird uh, spotting binoculars, walking, hiking binoculars, or whatever you want to call them, are fine. Uh, just for starting out, I mean, binoculars are going to show you star clusters, they're going to show you the craters on the moon, they're even going to show, show you some deep sky objects, some of the uh, brighter nebula and galaxies. So if you've got a pair of these or, you know, thinking of buying some kind of optical aid, uh, you'll be far better off just uh, spending a few pounds on a pair of binoculars before you even think about uh, buying a cheap telescope. Now, I will be doing a separate video on uh, choosing your first telescope. So, um, if you haven't subscribed, you know, may maybe uh, subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell because you don't want to miss that one. Um, and I'm I want to keep that one a separate video because um, there's a lot of things you've got to think about. It's a lot easier than just going out and saying, oh, I'll have that telescope. Okay, so stay tuned for that one. Now, probably my top tip for any beginner, something that you're going to learn um, you, you, so much in just a couple of visits, probably a thousand YouTube videos worth, is if you're lucky enough to have some kind of astronomical club nearby you and joining it, okay, an astronomical society. Now, here in Chesterfield, we're really lucky, about two miles that way, we have the uh, Chesterfield Astronomical Society, uh, the thing where it all began for me, really. I joined that when I was about 12 years old, and I was lucky enough to grow up with a 18-inch uh, Newtonian reflector, uh, would, be, <laughs> would be fantastic if it was a refractor, a reflector, a Newtonian reflector, and a lovely dome. It's a fantastic telescope, and uh, so, yeah, like I say, I, I was lucky enough to grow up with one of those. But the thing is, with astronomy clubs, or societies, societies is don't be worried about joining them because you know nothing about the night sky okay they'll accept people at all levels and to be honest with you they love beginners because there's nothing more an astronomer loves is to share this amazing hobby okay and get you started um, so just have a quick Google search and see if there is some kind of club that's nearby you. You may be surprised um, that there is actually, uh, because there's quite a few dotted around uh, um, all over the place. And it's usually not that expensive. You don't need no qualifications or nothing like, you don't have to be some professor or something to join an astronomical society. Um, and uh, usually all they want, uh, the, well, I know of this one at Chesterfield is just a small donation usually, you know, throw a couple of pounds in a bucket or something like that to keep the observatory going. Uh, but like I say, it's full of really fantastic people where you're just going to be able to ask as many questions as you like. You're going to be able to use 
some amazing gear, some gear that you can only dream of. I know I have in my time up, up there. Um, and so, you know, I can't advise it anymore. Now, if you haven't got a uh, society nearby you, the next best thing would be some kind of astronomy group, online group. Now, um, one of my subscribers has kindly set up a uh, Facebook group for Small Optics. I'll leave a link in the description for that. And you're more than welcome to come in there, ask as many questions as you like. Okay, so remember, it doesn't matter what level you are, just get yourself joined in some kind of group or uh, society. You'll not regret it, trust me. Well, that's about all I can really advise you in starting this uh, hobby of astronomy. And uh, just learning the constellations, like I said, I know I keep going on and droning on about the constellations, but trust me, it's probably, it's the bread and butter of this hobby. Um, you, you know, I can't tell you how much your world is going to open up and, and make life so much easier for you. Well, that's about it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you watched this far, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell uh, for the uh, telescope one, uh, buying your first telescope. Uh, I'm going to get that done pretty soon. In the meantime, go and find yourself a couple of constellations and I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.